What the? Hey, what's up, for audience? This is Gamer Night with the Gamers Setup, and we're about to do something completely unrelated to video games. I also run a gaming channel, so basically explains the gamer setup. And speaking of gaming, go check out my other channel called The Night Raptor. That channel mostly consists of me playing video games as well as Dead by Daylight. So please go ahead and check it out. I'm begging you, please. I'm not getting any views. Also, don't mind the printers running in the background. Uh, I'm printing other stuff at the moment. All right, so as promised, this is going to mark the beginning of the Iron Man Mark 42 project that I will be making by the end of this year. And by the end of the year, I mean by October 31st. So for this project, what I'm specifically going to focus on is screen accuracy. So that means I'm not going to focus too much on mechanical design as well as practicality, because you know, I want to make the most screen accurate suit I can. And that's most likely going to mean I'm going to have to sacrifice some practicality. However, it's not going to go to the point where I'm not going to be able to move at all. So I am going to allow some room for uh, joint mobility and whatnot and all other aspects that would are required for me to actually wear the suit. So it's basically just to balance between the two so I can get that sweet spot. However, there are going to be some screen accuracy aspects that are going to require me to implement some sort of machinery or mechanical design of some sort. So like I said, balance. However, as I stated before, I'm going to be leaning more into visual screen accuracy. So as I promised in the last vid, I'm going to show you guys how I basically prep the, uh, the helmet for printing and any additional tweaks that would help in the design. All right, so here, is the model itself. However, we're not going to be looking at this. We're only going to be focusing on, on the helmet. So we're going to hide these. And this is the helmet itself. So I basically separated this into a bunch of separate pieces. The back plate, the main helmet, the face plates, cheekbones, the lip, and the eyelids. All right, so the first problem I mentioned about the helmet was that it's, it was way too thin. So what I did was I went into the helmet. You're basically going to have to select every single one of these faces on the interior. However, you're going to ignore this part because that's a separate problem. So you choose these and you hit, what is it? Alt S and that's going to move, the, move these faces along their perpendicular axis. So yeah, if I, I can't move it anywhere but in that single axis. So yeah, that's really handy. And while well, you can basically put it whatever, wherever you want. However, this part, remember this, it was a pain in the ass. So basically what happened here was, I'm gonna remove all these, hide them. I'm not sure if you see this little detail portion here. I'm also gonna choose this, hide this. But this was a portion that was super, super difficult to work with. What happened was that the inner layer was basically wrapped around all these little grooves and it was super thin. So I wasn't, and basically if I were to use that same technique that I used on the uh, on the main helmet, basically the faces that correspond to this face are gonna go into, are gonna basically collide with this face and you're gonna see a bunch of collisions within these grooves. So yeah, that's, so that technique's complete garbage in this aspect. So what I basically did was I deleted this entire portion right here. I deleted the entire inner portion and I basically just redid it. I deleted all this and I just created new faces that would go out and just make this a whole lot thicker. So that basically fixes that problem. For this portion, you can use the same technique as the main helmet. So it's not bit, not that big of a problem. So yeah, so that's basically how I increase the, thic the thickness without having to completely change up the interior. So yeah, so for a lot of these processes, you're gonna have to create new faces or new objects, basically to improve the overall design of the helmet. So now if I basically get rid of this and this and this and this and this and this, you're gonna see a bunch of these little boxes in the in the center. And remember how I basically showed off these little cylinder things that were inside that would uh, hold the back plate, which was basically this. Well, that's what these are for. So instead of the cylinders, I actually added in this little rectangle, as well as this little groove. And if you can tell, I made them line up as perfectly as possible to the back plate as I possibly could. And so the magnets are gonna sit here or here, somewhere around somewhere around this area. And so these little parts are gonna provide a place for the back plate to rest, while the magnets are basically gonna be pulling up on the uh, on the back plate. And now if we go to the face plate, you're gonna see that I did the exact same thing for the eyelids. You already know what it's gonna do. It's just gonna be this is going to provide a place for the uh, for the eyelids to rest while I basically glue them. This is not going to be magnet magnetized, they're going to be glued. And I also placed the object in the forehead grooves because uh, the lines were actually uh, indented on the inside as well. So it's not exactly the best for uh, durability. So this is going to help a little bit. However, granted, this is not the original placement of the eyelids. They actually used to be a little lower. However, I've actually been looking at a bunch of uh, different variations of the helmet. And yes, there's actually different variations. The CGI helmet and the physical helmet actually differ from each other. So the CGI helmet actually had the eyelids a little lower, and the physical helmet had them a little higher, basically giving him an angrier look. So I actually prefer that. So I actually moved the eyelids a little higher, and then after that, that's when I added these little grooves. And that's where they'll be resting when I finally assemble the helmet. 
And if you notice, you're actually going to see some indents in two parts of the faceplate. This actually corresponds to the mechanical design that I made for the helmet. However, I'm going to talk about that later. For now, we're just going to focus on the actual physical helmet. And so for the last bit, you're actually going to see this. So you're, gonna, you're probably going to notice that this looks completely different from the original design that I had for this. And that's because I added these little design here on the side just to kind of fill in the space because this place was really empty. And so that actually makes the, the mouthpiece look, uh, seem a little more uh, busy. This actually used to be just one single L in terms of like the, the profile view. And it, and it had no thickness. So basically I added the thickness on the side. And I also added this little platform that basically if I were to bring back the lip here, it actually almost perfectly conforms to the lip. So if I were to assemble it, this thing should be able to uh, basically perfectly align with it. And so I can glue it in place. So yeah, the added designs require you to create new objects and new faces, basically to make the helmet a little more practical. And well, I basically approve of these designs because they don't really, uh, they don't actually sabotage the physical design of the helmet. So they're pretty good. Unlike the previous helmet, this one is actually going to have a mechanical design to it. So I'm going to introduce the hinge system that I designed. So if you've actually seen the movie, you notice that Tony was able to physically remove the faceplate as well as be able to use it in the hinge system that he has. So I actually wanted to do the exact same thing. So the way I'm going to go about this is I'm going to use the exact same magnets that I've used for the previous helmet, basically these guys. And so on the previous helmet, I was actually attaching them by their, by their sides like this and not by their faces. And it's, it's okay. I mean, it's, it's pretty strong. However, that's not how I'm going to do this. Instead, I'm going to attach them by their face. And let me tell you, attaching them by their face is actually a lot stronger than by the side. So yeah, this is going to hold the face place stronger than the main one. a fork. <laughs> So the way I'm going to implement that design into the hinge system, you're going to notice that there's these little grooves here and that's where the magnets are going to rest. And if you notice the faceplate, the faceplate also has little grooves in there and that's where the other magnet is going to sit. And so in theory, if this works correctly, the magnet should hold the faceplate strong enough for when the servos are working and it should be easy enough for me to pull out the faceplate with my hand. And once I put the faceplate back, these should align themselves pretty well. So if I were to like put them close to each other. They align perfectly. So yeah, putting the faceplate back shouldn't be that much of a problem. So I don't think I'll need to put some um, sort of stopper here for, for the hinge to stay in place. I'll trust that the hinge is going to stay there by itself. If not, then I'll just like print out a little cylinder and I'll just stick it on there. Whatever needs to happen. And if you notice, this design was actually inspired by uh, another design made by James from Robots.co the UK. Or James Brett. And no, I'm not trying to mock him. I just think his inch is really iconic. So if you want to see his original design of uh, his hinge system, you can go check it out at his channel. And I'll also be linking that video in the description below. And from that design, I actually implemented this little loop here in which I'm going to tie a little fishing line or something like that into it. And there's going to be a tube that runs downwards. And so that fishing line is going to be, re is going to be reeled up by the servo. And so that's actually going to be part of the design that I may be copying from him. So I'll go ahead and give credit where credit's due. But yeah, all the electronics, we're going to be talking about that later. For now, we're just going to be talking about what, the, what we're going to be printing. And so basically that's practically it for uh, for the design. Not much else is really needed. At least not that I see right now. I mean, while I was doing that, I actually kind of, if you kind of see the helmet back there, that kind of looks kind of empty in a way. So I'm actually going to be adding something while I'm at it. So while I was working, I decided to add in a, uh, a helmet stand. And yes, this is my own design. I didn't get this from anywhere. So it's it's not it's nothing too uh, too too complicated. You you could just make a circle platform, a really long cylinder, and then at the top there's like a, an, an upside down cone, which will be supporting the helmet. So it's not it's nothing too difficult. I just added these little designs just for some uh, pizzazz. But at the same time, I didn't really want to really want to waste too much filament. So I made this as uh, as bare bones as possible. So basically from here, you just take it over the mesh mixer and uh, separate the shells as well as make a couple cuts on the main helmet. Uh, I, I made some cuts here and here, but if you want, you can print the whole thing. However, I'm trying to save filament. So let's get to printing.
All right, so here, just put it here. Here are the pieces in question, and you're probably gonna notice something a little different about this piece. If you look, if you look at this part over here, if you notice this, I added this little wedge on the tip right here, and it's a separate piece. I basically made a balloon cut, and it, it it fits quite perfectly on there. So the reason why I made this little piece over here was because when I placed the helmet on the stand, just bare bones without the wedge, it uh it was a little front heavy because the battery sit on the face plate so it just kind of topples over and i'm just like well sh so this is my solution i just kind of made a little wedge here so the chin kind of sits here and well this is the support and well it's a pretty simple solution so uh, i'm pretty proud of it so this will go here and this will go here looks good i'm gonna turn on the lights just for some uh extra pizzazz so now here we have the pieces in question so this came out nicely everything came out nicely and i actually printed this out at the same angle however i made the uh, the base a little more stable because the reason why i didn't print was because this wasn't really attached very well to the to the surface and it'll just kind of topple over and it just strings up so i made the base a little bigger on these guys and uh, it actually came out really well just to kind of show it off to you guys here so yeah, that's that piece. Everything else is pretty simple, nothing too uh, complicated really, except for these little uh, these little wedges and like uh, the, these little cylinders, whatever. It just, they just kind of they just kind of connect to each other, so it makes my life easier trying to align this stuff. Because it's uh, if it doesn't align well and you stick it, it's it's gonna look horrible. So yeah, so now I'm gonna go ahead and attach this stuff. Alrighty, so this thing is done for now. You're gonna notice that there's a bunch of pieces that I haven't glued on, and that's for obvious reasons. One, because, uh, well, most of these pieces are gonna be in different color. There's gonna be black, silver, black and silver, and whatnot. These are gonna be unpainted. However, obviously these are not gonna be glued. Why would I glue these? These are the hinge pieces, and I'm actually gonna do some further testing before this becomes uh, final. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and do a little fitment test. See if this actually fits me, because you know I have these little, these little extra parts. I'm not sure if this is gonna cause some problems, but that's what we're gonna see here. All right, so yeah, already this is really tight on my head. It's real good. This fits uh, pretty well. I'm gonna put my face paint on. This fits pretty well. But obviously these little rectangles over here on the sides are making it a little difficult to put on, so I'm gonna have to trim those down, obviously. I think it's oh then it's stuck. Ugh. Yeah, these are gonna these are gonna cause some problems. So I'm gonna trim it down. I'm gonna leave this part. I'm gonna trim it down right around here and just eliminate this whole portion because this part's gonna cause me some problems. And before we move on, we're actually going to do something else that I call the string test. And well, it's going to have something to do with these hinges. So what worries me, as I stated before, is that this part that goes a little farther back, I fear that it's probably going to crash uh, between my helmet and my head. So I want to do a little test before I go in, because I want to see how thick it needs to be before it can actually fit. Because if you haven't noticed, um, this helmet's pretty... Uh, perfectly fit to my head. So what I'm going to do is this there, there's this little loop here and I'm going to take the string and put it inside the loop if it wants to. So yeah, there it goes. And then I'm going to take a piece of tape and then kind of tape the two halves together and that's going to be a little portion. Now I want to do this to both sides and uh, hopefully they won't like fall off their hinge because there's not really anything holding it together. I just need to have an idea of whether this thickness is going to work or not. So that's all I need. And we're going to attach this to the other side. Where 
would supposedly go. Hopefully it'll fall off. Alright, this is gonna hurt. There you go. Has this fallen off? No, it has not. So, now I just need to find where the stupid yarn is. And I probably lost it. Okay, so this side just kind of vanished into thin air. So I'm gonna grab the other side. Alright, there's a string. So I'm gonna pull it down. Hopefully you can see it. So it does sort of fit. However, this is a bit troublesome because I can feel a tight... It's uh, There's a lot of friction. So if that's the case, it fell off. Well, I have a good idea of what's going to happen. Uh, there's a lot of friction. So I'm going to rely a lot on, uh, on gravity for this thing to go back down. So if there's a lot of friction, it's just going to stay up here. So I'm going to need something a little thinner. And that's exactly what I did. So I made a second pair. They're a lot thinner. So we're going to use these. These are the new versions that I'm going to be using. And we're, we're going to replace the strings on the new ones. All right, so I got the string here, I think. All right, so uh, I made the string longer. I have no idea while I was trying to fight an uphill battle. So here we go. All right, hopefully I have the string. Yep, there's one string, there's the other. Where's the other? I can see it. I can't. Okay, there you go. So let's see how they, uh, how they fare. Okay, this is a little funky here. Something's stuck up somewhere. It's stuck on my hair. All right, so. Yeah, it's going pretty smoothly. Okay, I think this might actually work. That's going up, that's going down. Okay, so I'm actually, I'm actually feeling no, um, no friction with the levers. So that's some good news. So, so far, these new levers actually uh, fit pretty well. So I might, these might actually be the final levers. Um, of course, I have to. I still have to print out the little caps that will go on on the on the pivot. That'll be for a later date. And also, I might have to. I'm gonna have to trim these back, and uh, I'll do that off camera. And for the rest of these pieces, these are gonna go on after I paint them, because these are gonna be a different paint. This is gonna be silver. This is also gonna be silver, but these are basically part of the helmet, so I can't really do anything about it. But I'll just have to mask this off. But to make my life easier, I'm just going to paint this separately. However, the hinges, I'm not going to paint those at all because they're just hinges. And they're silver anyway, so I don't really need to worry about it. And once I get the whole hinge system in order and uh, everything's all fine, uh, that's when I'll glue in the, uh, the magnets. And you're going to see that this actually fits in quite well. So yeah, so I think it's, uh, I think I modeled it pretty well. So yeah, so that's the, uh, that's the helmet assembled. So uh, I think that's going to be it for this video. So go ahead and stay tuned for the next video where I'm actually going to sand this down, do the finishing touches, which is basically painting it and making it look good. So if you want to see that, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification and stay tuned. So yeah, if you like this video, go ahead, like, subscribe and comment. Do whatever you need to do. Go ahead and hit that bell notification so you get notified every time I post a new video. So yeah, so that's going to be it for me and I'm a dip.